Okay, so let's start using IAM. So for this, you can just click on Find Services and type IAM and you will find the IAM service. So we are going to create users and groups to start allowing our users that are part of our company to use our AWS accounts. So as we can see right now, we have zero users and zero groups. So let's go to users and we're going to add a user. Now you have to enter a username, okay? And for me, that is going to be Stefan because I'm going to create a user for myself. And you are encouraged to create a user for yourself as well because it is not recommended to use the root account to use AWS. It is recommended for you to create a user to do that. So we're going to create a user named Stefan and then you have to give it access to AWS. So for now, I just want to authorize Stefan to get access to the AWS Management Console, which is what we're seeing right here. In terms of password, you can get an auto-generated password or a custom password. I'll keep it as auto-generated. And then the password will be reset on the next login. So whenever I log in with my account, I will have to change my password if I take that box. But I won't take it. And I'm going to enter a custom password because I already know what password I'm going to use. And this is my account. Next, I click on permissions. And as we can see, we can either add a user to a group or directly attach policies to that user. So we are going to follow the best practices. And as such, we're going to create a group. And that group is going to be called admins. This is going to represent all the administrators within my account. So you can create a group by job function. You can create a group by department. It's up to you, right? But for me, I want to define administrators for my AWS accounts. So I will use admins. And then you have to attach a policy to the group. So here, the policy I will do is to attach an administrator access. This will allow all my users within the group to have full access to AWS, which is what I want. So I'll click on create group and I'll be done. Next, we have to click on tags. So we can tag our users. So in AWS, you will see tags everywhere. Tags are a way for you to mark the users and add them some attributes, but they don't change how AWS works. It's up to you just to classify and organize your resources. For example, the department of Stefan could be engineering. Okay, so you're free to enter the tags you want. I won't be using many tags in this course, but I want to show you right now one example of how you can use tags. So my department is engineering, but you can enter really whatever you want for a key and whatever you want for a value. I'll click on next review and we're good to go. I'll click on create the user and my user is now created. So as we can see now, we can download a CSV that contains every information, including how to log in and the password and so on. As well, we can give this link to our user to sign in, but I will show you how to change this link in a second. So I'm going to click on close because I already know my password, but if you don't know your password, you should download the CSV from before. And as we can see now, we have one user, part of a group admin. So if you click on group and look at it and click on admins, we can see that this group has one user currently. The user is Stefan. And if you go to permissions, we can see that this policy was attached to the group and now all the users within that group should inherit that policy. So how do we make sure of this? Well, if I click on user and click on Stefan, then go to permissions, we can see that there's one policy applied to my user and that policy comes from a group. So it says attached from group, which is administrator access. So now if I log in using the Stefan account, then I should be able to do anything I want on my account. So let's log in with my user. For this, I'm gonna to go to my dashboard and you can see there is a IAM user signing link. You can use that link, it is fine, and you can send it to anyone who needs to log in to your AWS accounts, or you can customize that link and enter what's called an account alias. So it has to be unique globally, but I will try Stefan CCP and see if someone took it. And I'll say yes, create, and no one took it, so this worked. So create your own signing link if it makes more sense because I remember this signing link much better than the one from before. So once we have this signing link, we're going to log in. So I just opened a new web browser. I'm going to copy the link from before and paste it here. So this is going to be my signing link that's easy to use. And as we can see, if we use this link, the account ID is already pre-filled with the alias that I defined from before. So how do we get there if you don't have that link? Well, we can click back on signing using a root email. And as we can see now with the option, root user was what we used to log in on the left-hand side, but now we log in as an IAM user. So I'm going to click on IAM user, and then I have to enter my account ID, which is what I defined from before. Click on next. 
and I am getting back to the exact same page. So I enter my IM username, which correspond to the user that I have created right here on the left hand side, and the password, which is absolutely not this one, it is this. And then I'm able to connect into my console using that user. So it's not magical, it's fairly easy, but I want to show you something that's different. So if we look at the web page on the left hand side, you see here that the account says Stefan CCP and nothing else. So this means I'm the root user because it just displayed the name of the account. But here on the right hand side, I have Stefan at Stefan CCP, which represents my username, I am user Stefan, on my account Stefan CCP. And so that's very important. Whenever you see on the left hand side, no at sign, that means that I'm using the root user. And if you see an at sign, that means I am using an I am user. Okay. So for some of the part of the tutorial, I will say whenever I'm using the root user, and I will say when I'm using an account user. But now you've seen the both ways to log in into AWS. So you're good to go. I will see you in the next lecture.